there. Hint. Ready. Ready to go. Ready to get started. Let's get started. Um, yes. Hello, Alessa. How are you today? Hello. Hello, Andrew. Let me uh, add you right away. Here. And we can start talking. <laughs> uh, How are you doing? Okay. So, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. What about you, Andrew? I'm doing very well. Very well. Glad to finally see you in person. We've only uh, we've only texted or messaged. That's right. Just a moment because my my message disappeared. Let me just leave it pinned here. Here, here. All right. Now it's Fix their spend. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's the first time we talk. Um, so I, w I think I will introduce myself really quickly and then uh, we'll start chatting. Okay, you can talk about yourself okay. and okay. I'll ask you questions. If you want to ask me questions, you can do that too. <laughs> so okay. I was thinking about doing that for the first half of the live and then we'll see how it goes and then maybe play that game. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the game, I have to say. I'm always uh -huh. interested in learning new games, but I'm also yeah. interested in hearing um, who you are. I, I've, I've been looking at your videos, and, and I'm a little <laughs> curious. Yeah, so my name is Erica, and uh, I'm a Brazilian. I live in Brazil. I live in Belo Horizonte, not Rio, not Sao Paulo. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, those are the two cities people know about. And okay. I've lived for one year as an exchange student in the U.S. That's why I have an American accent, <laughs> probably. Okay. And I'll, I'll, uh, also because of the, the courses I took uh, when I was young, they were all, they all taught American English. So I have, hello, make mistakes, English. Yes. Uh, and I have been teaching for quite a while now. <laughs> yeah. I think that's about it. Would you like to ask something? Or well, um, okay? I, I would like to ask, and probably uh, some other people watching would like to ask as well, but where were you for one year in the U.S.? Yes, uh, I was in New Hampshire. Oh. New Hampshire. So it's a oh. very tiny, it's a tiny state in the northeast of the okay. U.S., and... Um, it borders uh, Canada, so I actually visited Canada, Montreal, and Quebec, and uh, cities like New York. I had I could travel a little bit. I was not supposed to travel a lot, <laughs> but I couldn't miss the chance to visit oh, these places. And yeah, were, so... you there, were you there uh, during high school, during university? During high school, it was the last year, senior year there. Okay. So there was the whole graduation thing going on, you know, the prom and all those events. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you, you, and, you uh, had the opportunity. You had the opportunity to go to the prom. Yes, I did. I did. It's so funny because another teacher asked me about. She had a similar experience, uh, uh -huh. and uh, she asked me about those things, about the prom and so on. <laughs> And it's funny because I, I told her when I was in New York, I had that, you know, that feeling of familiarity because of the movies, you know, and the TV shows and stuff because of the buildings, the people, uh, busy streets and so on. But as for the proms, I, I don't know. I didn't have, um, I didn't know much about it, you know, so everything was a surprise, a very big surprise for me. And also the, um, the importance that people give to it is super, super high, you know, and I, it was new to me, that, that feeling. So it was nice. It was uh, cool. I, I kind of assume maybe people know prom uh, from, from the movies. So there are two names for it, actually. You can call it prom or ball. There's a little yeah. technical difference, but it is at the end of high school. It is a big formal yeah. dance, um, and so you have to wear extremely formal clothing. Uh, yeah. Normally, you have to go to an extremely expensive restaurant, 
And there's sort of an escalation where, you know, one year if somebody does one thing, one restaurant, the next year someone will do a more expensive restaurant and then a more expensive oh. restaurant. And oh, cool. If one year somebody gets a limo, the next year somebody will get a helicopter. And it just... <laughs> It, really? It, oh my God! It, it just goes like mad, and so really, I've I've seen crazy things. I've seen absolutely crazy things where, yeah, limos <laughs> are involved, helicopters are involved. Wow! Well, what I can say is that this happened a long time ago, before the internet, and um, there weren't any limos. There weren't any <laughs> because I lived in a very small town. There were five thousand people there, and. Uh, not very expensive restaurants, things are super, super simple, but okay. some elements were like the dress and having a date and also the flower, how do you call that thing you put on your wrist? Massage. Yeah, the a wrist corsage or a, a corsage here. Yeah. yeah, so uh, this is what I remember, but nowadays things are probably different. So where are you from, Andrew? Uh, are you American? I, I am American, and probably you can hear that in my accent. Um, so I'm American, just like you. We are both American. And I am sort of the opposite of you, in a sense, because I'm from Alaska. And so oh. I think that is about as opposite as you can get from Brazil wow. geographically. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, wait, wait a second. I'm not going to remember the... the <laughs> Anchorage, Anchorage. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Well, it's Have cool you... that it's actually cold. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Uh, there are two books that I read. One of them is, um, oh, my God. Well, Into the one world. of them, yes, yes, okay. of course. And I recommend everyone here. So, Actually, welcome everyone, because I didn't have a chance to say welcome to you all, Andrew's followers, my followers. Uh, you can ask questions, okay? We're just chatting here. Into the, and, uh, uh, was it Into the Wild? Yeah, Into the Wild, and the yeah. other one uh, with the dogs. <laughs> ah, you know, about sl sl sledge dogs or sleigh dogs? dogs. Uh, um, those husky, husky dogs. Yeah, I don't know if I know that. There's um, some other ones about dogs and about maybe wolves, but I can't think of any that are yeah. about sled dogs. Yeah, Into the Wild is the guy who decided to leave everything, all his belongings, possessions, and go to Alaska, right? That is absolutely true. It was made into a movie uh, yeah. directed and or produced by, of course, Sean Penn. Yeah, ah, that's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah. The, I read the book first. So I was so impressed with the, the book, you know, and then I watched it, the movie. The movie is okay. It's good, actually. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Sean Penn does I, good work. I, I, I appreciate yes, it. Does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I like this kind of stories, you know, when a person, you know, travels, and especially when a person goes to somewhere, to a place that is kind of, um, how can I say it? Not remote, inhospitable, yeah. remote, yes, yes. Uh, I love stories of climbers. Nowadays, everybody's climbing the Himalayas. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I like those stories. Uh, it was very cool. For, so you, you're not living there now. But, but there's something we have in common. I, I mean, on one, okay. hand, on one hand, you know, I'm way up north and, and you're, yes. you're much farther down south, of course. But there yes. is this one thing that we, I think, have in common. Uh -huh. And that is that I, in my experience, people, unfortunately, ask Brazilians particularly bad questions about the country of Brazil. You uh -huh. know, so, so, and people ask Alaskans particularly bad questions as well. So when people hear I'm from Alaska, they say, you know, do you live in an igloo? Do you have television? Uh -huh. Do they have roads? Oh, my God, really? Um, yeah. What language <laughs> And I find that Brazilians <laughs> suffer something sort of similar, where people have a lot of ideas about Brazil. People have a lot of, um, you know, preconceived notions, prejudice, yeah. uh, 
um, misinformation, basically. And I feel that yeah. when Brazilian people travel around the world and when, when I travel around the world, both of us are like, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> I say, I'm from Alaska. Right. And they say, oh, I thought you were American. I say, I'm from Alaska. And they say, oh, well, your English is quite good. And <laughs> like... <laughs> This is, this is so funny. Really, I, yeah, this is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, you know, now we have the internet, and so we do all yeah. have more, more information. But years yeah. ago, before the internet, I was teaching, and my Brazilian students, I mean, I, I was teaching, I remember this one woman who was, she was um, quatrilingual. She was a lawyer, and she had an MBA. She was a, a elegant, intelligent, wonderful human being. And she was blonde uh -huh. and she had blue uh -huh. arena. Mm -hmm. And people were saying, oh no, you're not from Brazil because you're blonde. And she was saying, yeah. well, I'm from Brazil. And they would say, you know, they were saying just really crazy things like, um, you know, do people live in trees or, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know, is it, are there parties 24 hours a day? And, and all of these things because People see the imagery from something like uh, Mardi Gras. Yeah, they, yes, yes. They start forming <laughs> ideas, and it, it, it is, um, you know, I'm sure it's great for tourism, but, um, you know, in terms of getting people excited about the country. But yeah. I, think, I think that maybe Brazilian people have to deal with a lot of questions. Yeah, this is interesting because, yeah, while I was there in the U.S., uh, Yes, some people asked about animals like crocodiles and you know, on the streets and things like that. Um, okay, that was before the internet. Now, people have more access to information and uh, the, some questions changed, others did, don't uh, or haven't changed. Like uh, people they still connect us with soccer, samba, carnival, Uh, and I don't know what else. This, this is a good question. I'm going to ask people here, what do they connect Brazil with? But um, one thing that people tend to think is that we speak Spanish here. Because all the other that. countries. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because well, I understand you're on a, you're on a very Spanish speaking continent. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So people tend to think we speak Spanish here and it's similar to Portuguese. We were colonized by the Portuguese and the yeah. rest, the, the other countries are colonized by, the, by Spain. Um, yeah. So nowadays, this is the question people get confused the most. The other questions are not so common. Usually I start talking about soccer. I ask people about soccer. People don't ask me about it. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe the internet has, has helped people a bit with information. Yeah, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm optimistic. I think, uh, you know, people, some people, they, they say they try to um, attach value to things, right? Oh, the internet is good. The internet is bad. I believe it's how we use it, how we... Mm. how we right how we mm. yeah for example i love learning i love taking courses on the internet and uh, learning languages so it has been helping me a lot <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah, very cool in this way let me just tell you something because i think i remember it's call of the wild uh and i forgot the name the author call of the Jack wild London, maybe yeah yes 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 jack yes, london, yes. Yeah. Jack london. And Into the Wild is the other one, yes. Uh, yeah, I like that. Wild titles, yeah. Yes, yeah. Do you like reading? Um, I do, I do. And, and I've, read, I've read Call of the Wild, but I haven't read Into the Wild. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, the, the, the sad thing is, though, um, you know, I, I have a degree in literature. And, oh. you know, all through my childhood, I was a reader, reader, reader. And obviously, all through okay. university. But I do find it rather hard to fit in as an adult. Yeah, it is. I it mean, is. Who has who has time for novels? I, <laughs> I I'm I'm really I have I'm I'm a bit ashamed about it, but I'm I'm shifting toward um, podcasts and mm -hmm. um, you know, TED talks and uh, yeah. documentaries. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is, that is true. Um, and now when I do have time, I, I try to read. Um, novels in, in my second language, uh, because I think that's really helpful. Um, Which is Spanish. Spanish, yeah. 
But I have to admit that sometimes I read kind of simple novels in, in Spanish. Uh -huh. I don't read really complex novels. Like, for example, I'll, I'll read novels by George Orwell or something that, uh -huh. you know, like something like Animal Farm or 1984 or these type of books that are uh, literature maybe, but not, not super, super complicated. You know, I'm still... Oh, okay, I'm still, yeah. I get I'm it. I'm sort of at that level. I'm sort of at that yeah. level. Yeah. So. There are two things I want to say. Uh, that was happening with me because I also have a degree in literature and I read a lot as a child in university. And then I was feeling very frustrated because I couldn't read the, the, the book, the, a paper book. So I started listening to audiobooks, which some people don't consider it reading. <laughs> it, it's a different type, right, of uh, connection. It's like audio reading. It's a different experience, I would say. And uh, I actually yeah. like it a lot because many times it's the author reading the book. So uh -huh. I've, I've done that, that a lot. So it helps me feel less anxious and frustrated because I'm not reading. So I do that uh -huh. with books. And... Yeah. And also for, for any, any uh, listeners here, if, yeah. Depending on your level, you know, um, I found that audiobooks in my second language were amazing because, for example, when you watch a film, maybe you kind of understand, but there's a visual and then your brain uh -huh. compensates. Or if yeah. you're watching a documentary, you know, you have to listen to the language, but there's a visual. And so with other formats, you can trick yourself into thinking you're a little bit better than you mm. are. But with an audio book, right. it's a hundred percent your comprehension. And oh, yeah, it, that's it, right. is, um, it is a great way, in my opinion, to really challenge your comprehension yeah. in your, in your yeah. second language. Um, and, you, you know, you can start with um, some things that are rather simple. I started with things like um, The Little Prince or, mm -hmm. you know, books that I'm familiar with that, that I just wanted to re-experience. Um, And, but it's, it's, a, it's a great, um, I mean, storytelling is just kind of a lost art. And, yes, yes, yes. Um, listening to somebody, usually with a really beautiful voice, you know, they, mm -hmm. they sometimes hire really great actors um, to do that. Listening to someone tell you a story is just pleasurable. It's just great. Yeah. You know? and, I, and I think that in the modern world, we kind of have forgotten that. Yeah, you know one thing, I love that. This is one of the reasons I like audiobooks. And one of the, the types of books that I like is like plays, you know, uh, um, especially American plays from the 50s and 60s, post-war American plays. I love those. I really, I think it's fantastic to, to hear those stories. Uh, and then you have the cast, and, and it's really cool. I, I love uh, audio audio books. So no, I've never I've are... done I've done quite uh -huh. a few uh, audio books, but I've never done an audio play. Maybe that's my next yeah. uh, my next venture. Okay, that's that's fantastic. Okay, that's so good. so you are living in Spain now, yeah? Yeah. So I am from Alaska. That's where I was born. Mm -hmm. That's where I grew up. Um, and Alaska has this thing, <laughs> like, like maybe, like maybe some smaller countries is that, um, when you grow up in Alaska, the understanding is that when you're 18, you will leave oh. because, um, for many people, you know, because the good universities are not there and the good jobs are not mm -hmm. there. So the understanding is that you will leave. Mm -hmm. And part two is that typically then when you're at university, maybe your parents retire And uh -huh. nobody really wants to retire in Alaska because there's snow and ice and uh -huh. harsh conditions. So then being a person from Alaska, I believe you end up a little bit nomadic because you're obligated mm -hmm. to leave at age 18. And then there's uh -huh. no place to go back to because your parents then leave and they go to Florida or they go to yeah. California or they go, Somewhere you know, they warm. retire, <laughs> you know. And then you don't know anybody in their town. You uh -huh. don't even know, know anything about that region, perhaps. And so um, I think that there is sort of a, a type of person that comes from Alaska that is just sort of fated to be a little bit more of a traveler. Um, oh, and so I think that's one of, the, one of the interesting things, because many people yeah. just go there for one generation. 
you know, our parents, uh -huh. they yeah. were offered quite good jobs there because the economy was really expanding and mm -hmm. there was petroleum and, and there were opportunities. And, um, and of course, the petroleum implies that they needed doctors and they needed lawyers and they needed teachers and blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. so, um, so many people just went up there for a generation. And so um, it's a, an unusual place in that sense, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it's a lovely place. It's a really beautiful place. And of course, it's, um, I mean, it's really huge. It's, you know, um, <laughs> it's, it's like half of Europe or something. It's just a very big piece of land, uh -huh. um, with, you know, extreme mountains and um, just um, extreme forests and extreme amounts of wildlife and um, extremely low population. Um, oh, so, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, re I remember now I watched um, um, a documentary on, on Netflix, and it was about this woman. Uh, she races. There is a, a, a specific kind of race with uh, her dogs, her huskies, mm -hmm. you know, pulling the sleigh. I don't know. The, the, yeah, we, we have to say dog sled, but you're right. It's a type of yeah. sleigh. It is a very, it is an extreme. Everything in Alaska is extreme. So it is an extreme race. It lasts hours. I don't know if days, I don't know if it's 24 hours. She, they could have to go along the coast, the Pacific coast from one place mm -hmm. to the other. There are a lot of dangers. Uh, part of it is at night, you know? So, um, so it's really interesting to, to see that. It is funny th that you're talking about Alaska. We don't hear much about this place. Um, I'm learning a little bit of Hawaiian now uh, on Duolingo. And it's, it's kind of similar. I, I, of course, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Hawaii, I, I don't know actually uh, about much about it. I haven't read much about it. But I think it's a place also that people wouldn't consider you, the U.S., right? They would consider something different, like with mm -hmm. different kind of a population. And, and I was looking at the map. It's in the middle of the Pacific. I thought it was closer to the coast, but it's way yeah. way way exactly. in, very Absolutely. very far so yeah so yeah. Well, there you know, are it's characteristics really, it's really uh -huh. strange that you should bring up hawaii in an alaskan conversation because people in alaska feel so trapped and so cold that one of uh -huh. the most common uh, vacation destinations is hawaii really? so yeah, so as and a child, pronunciation is, is good as it. There is a glottal stop there, Hawaii. <laughs> That's Hawaii. what I learned in yeah, the course. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of glottal stops. There's a lot of glottal yes. stops in the, um, yeah. in the Hawaiian language. Uh -huh. And uh, so, yeah, my family would go at least once, if not twice a year. Um, wow. To, yeah, my, my family was really, really lucky because it's very expensive, but my father had a job with the government and when the government hired him, it was a little bit unusual to ask a person to move away from their family. So uh -huh. they asked my father to move away from his family in the center of the country to Alaska. And mm -hmm. then they, they made a, a contract with him that said that they would pay um, a vacation stipend every year so that he could visit wow. his family in some cold part of the United States in Minnesota. And uh -huh. so that money for us was the Hawaii money and not the go back to Minnesota money. <laughs> oh, um, and yeah. so it was, it was quite an expensive uh, vacation, but we never paid for it. The, the government uh -huh. paid for um, it because of, it was a very old policy because they were so concerned about separating families. Mm -hmm. So it was, mm -hmm. you know, of course now nobody, nobody thinks about that, but um, you know, my father was an older guy and when he was a young man, that was still the policy. So we benefited from this old, old, U.S. government policy and got free trips to Hawaii every year. That is so year. cool. So you've been in, to Hawaii a few times, quite a few times. I've been there like 15 times or something. I've been there a lot. Oh, my God. And that's, so you learned a little Hawaiian, right? Not really. I mean, you, <laughs> really. you just learn the, the, the basic, the, the very basic uh -huh. phrases, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing place. I, I yeah. really consider that snorkeling in Hawaii, you know, kind of like diving, but on the surface is, is one of the most mind blowing, one of the most yeah. phenomenal things you can experience just because you see 
every shape and size and color and type of fish just uh -huh. um and every every shade of coral and it's just um it's just something that is um absolutely breathtaking you know breathtaking yes yeah absolutely, i can imagine absolutely I, i i kind of i think everybody should have that on their life not necessarily hawaii wherever you know i mean snorkeling is great wherever um but, but you know i think everybody should kind of have that on their to do list personally i think that yeah it's just one yeah. of those things that everybody should know yeah Absolutely. it's nice because learning the language we can learn uh, a lot about the culture and the values of the culture right it's it's really cool i like the it's very cute <laughs> the language let me just ask one last question about hawaii i don't know if you remember there is they have a typical dish called poi did yeah. you see that yeah yeah i did we had poi um and poi is one of those things that if you if you didn't grow up eating it Yes, yeah. Um you just it doesn't taste good. Adjust. You just can't adapt, yeah. you can't adjust. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like um an example would be in in the UK and in in Australia for example, they've got marmite and vegemite. Uh -huh. And those are those are foods that a lot of foreigners just can't adjust to. You know, they uh -huh. just ah, ah. <laughs> they just they, yeah. they can't adjust to it and it's poi is one of those things like if you're a true Hawaiian you can eat poi but if you're a uh -huh. tourist or, you know you just can't and it's true it's All got right. a very a very powerful very unusual flavor oh okay because i've watched a few uh, videos on youtube of people making poi and they always say it's delicious it's delicious it's delicious but for foreigners it might not taste so good because maybe you, you need to have this acquired taste right if you're if you haven't grown um grown up eating it so it's something that is typical uh, unique absolutely. uh very very nice let me see i wanted to ask you also about your experience learning a new language spanish so people here are asking they're always asking how can i uh, improve my speaking how can i speak because i'm too shy and do i really need to learn grammar to speak the language and how can i improve this and that So, your tips, Andrew. What tips do you give your students and people in general? <laughs> I think that's a a good tip. I think that there's sort of a um maybe I would say a false dichotomy here where people say, you know, either you have to study the grammar or you just learn it naturally on the street. And I and I think uh -huh. that it's 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 much more um both of those things. And and but I I do I do think that historically grammar has been given way too much importance way too uh -huh. much importance so uh -huh. I, i think that i think that a little grammar is great you know just so that you you see the structure you practice the structure um and then i think that what the linguists are saying right now what i'm hearing mm -hmm. from the kind of current top linguists um is that it's just exposure 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 listen to mm -hmm. the music watch the movies read the newspapers if you can't if you don't have a level to talk to people listen turn on the radio just mm -hmm. inundate yourself and yeah. um those those passive forms of learning are are really really important mm -hmm. um yeah and, um, some people they the question this right uh, is the passive passive learning really helpful or passive and active learning right What I understand is that in the passive learning you're not really focused there not really paying attention like listening mm -hmm. to a song in the background or something. What, what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Learning that Well, way? I mean I, I think that there's there's also a difference between, you know, um just turning on the radio and doing active listening. Uh-huh. Um uh I mean, uh, I mean I'll give you an example in my life from, you know, one hour ago. My mm -hmm. new favorite thing My new uh -huh. my new favorite thing to do linguistically is to watch the show Big Bang Theory. Uh -huh. And it, it doesn't matter really. I I'll watch it once in Spanish and once in English or once in English and once in Spanish. And <clears throat> my my listening I think is very very active because what I'm really interested in is how they translate the jokes. Because the oh, okay. jokes are so so difficult and I'm so interested yeah. to hear if they make a word play you know a pun uh -huh. and either i'm listening first in spanish then i think oh what was the original or i listen first in english and i think how will they do that in spanish 
And I have to say that the people who are doing the translation for that show are doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just easy. astounded at how creative and intelligent they can be maintaining the humor. And sometimes they've got to change a cultural referent or an entire structure or something like that, but oh. they do a really great job. And so for me, yeah. it's like a puzzle. And I'm always listening like, yeah. ooh, how, how do you say, like, you know, just a little word like bully. Like they, they used a different word for bully. And I, I was like, I was wondering, oh, how are they going to translate that? Or sometimes it's just very strange. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But anyway, that's an example of just really being active about your listening and not just mm -hmm. turning it on and uh, mm -hmm. reading the subtitles or something. If I don't <laughs> use subtitles. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, everything together, right? Uh, I, I usually tell, tell my students that when they ask me, is this, can I do this? Can I do that? Is that okay? I say, everything is okay if you're studying, if you're in contact with the language. I don't think there is one situation in which you will unlearn something. <laughs> Or even if you see an explanation that might have some problems, you will see another explanation and you have to use your brains and the compare things and do the job, right? So anything that you do uh, will help you learn. And at, at least that's how I do it. When I'm learning a language, that's what I do. This I try to, uh, to so I'm living in Brazil, learning different yeah. languages, and I try to do something similar to an immersion. <laughs> so I listen to a lot of, uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, What's Duolingo. your target language these days? It was supposed to be German. <laughs> It was supposed to be German. But I got a little tired and I saw Hawaiian on Duolingo and I'm finishing my golden tree there. I'll, I'll probably finish today. And after that, I'm already thinking about Spanish. Those are languages that I have studied before. Uh, mm -hmm. German, Spanish, uh, French, Italian, etc., I'm kind of, uh, how do I say that, um, postponing German. <laughs> But I'm still in touch with German because during my meals, I watch uh, videos on YouTube, grammar videos on YouTube, and there is also a, a soap opera, a German soap opera. There are two, actually, but I follow one every day, which is Sturm der Liebe, Storm of Love. That's the name of the soap opera. That sounds, uh, it's, that sounds it's, like pretty potent stuff. Be careful. Be careful. Yes. Yes. I need to be careful. And it's so funny because it's supposed to have a lot of emotions going on. And, and it's a German soap opera. So it's, it's very cute, too. I like it. So there are subtitles in German. And I, I watch those episodes every day. So I have contact with German every single day. But yeah. sometimes I, yeah, I rest by studying other languages. <laughs> you re relax with a little Hawaiian, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know just, what is um, about, um, um, interesting. Uh, and one thing that I find mysterious about the German language is I used to work okay. with a lot of Swiss students. And in okay. Switzerland, I, I forget the exact um, you know, the requirements of their schooling system, but it's like you had to study 12 years of German and only six years of English. And all of my Swiss students said they couldn't speak a word of German and um, uh, they yeah. were really frustrated by it, but they, they love speaking English and they would just speak English all day long. And it just, mm -hmm. it, it makes me wonder if you can spend 12 years learning a language and feel like it's impossible or spend six years learning a language and just be, you know, Uh, fluent in it. It yeah. made me feel like, wow, maybe it is true that German is just a really rigorous, really difficult language. I don't know if that is the case because it is very logical. It is a logical language. So once you get the logic in it, it's easy. It's not difficult. I have problems with the pronunciation because as a Brazilian, as a native Portuguese speaker, there are some German sounds I just can't Uh, you know, I need to practice a lot to, mm -hmm. to make those sounds. But I, it might be that if your students are young, it might be that English is the global language and we want to communicate. We want to, you know, 
and the German is not. So unless you are an engineer uh, or something else, you know, you have another occupation and you have some kind of connection with Germany, um, even living in Switzerland, you know, people are really focusing on, on English first, I would say. Um, so that might be uh, um, an explanation for that. Yeah, well, I mean, the I, other thing is, if, if we are to be scientific about what I just said, you know, at the time uh -huh. I was living in San Francisco, and so obviously all of the people that flew to San Francisco to, to, to speak English were quite enthusiastic about it. You know, maybe all of the people yeah. who flew to Berlin were quite enthusiastic about Berlin. So my, yeah. my, yeah. my study yeah. is flawed. <laughs> there is a flaw in <laughs> yeah, my that study. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Andrew, we, we have only um, kind of uh, a little more than 20 minutes left. We need oh, to, okay. to do this again, a live stream, another live stream, because I would okay. like to play the, the game for a while. I but would I would to like to talk... Game. I'm, yeah, I'm, let uh, me teach you. You can play it with your. There you go. Yes. So uh, this is a game that children play here in Brazil. I don't know if they, if in, if in the U.S. they play a similar game. We have these categories. I think I explained to you like five. I'm going to show you the categories here. You can okay. write them down. Okay. Let me just uh -huh. show you now. You and the followers. So I don't know if you can read this. Okay, so it's occupation, Patients, uh, fruit, yeah, fruit, animals, animals uh, nationality, and clothing. And clothing. Okay. Yeah, so okay. your followers can write this down too. You can, of course, please participate. And these are the categories. So uh, I have a timer, a one-minute timer. And in this one minute, we have to come up with only one word for each Category is starting with the same letter. So I'm going to ask the followers here to give us one letter, one single letter. Just type it here in the comments. If you don't do that, we'll choose ourselves <laughs> the, the letter. I've played this game like twice. So um, the followers usually ask for a Z or a Q and letters like that, which is really hard. I don't know if they even understand what we're saying here. Just a comment. Ashraf is saying, just making some videos about kind of jobs and how I can pass at the interview. Oh, this is, these are tips for us <laughs> to yeah. post videos about yeah. that because All there right, are a lot so of people looking for oriented. Is there a letter here? Okay, L. Yes, yeah, Amir. So, L, now, L. Now so now we, we, we try to do as many of these things, these categories with L, right? Yeah, it's actually one word. I'm going to um, set the timer for one minute. Okay. One minute. It's just one word for each category, starting with the letter L. Okay? okay. So I started it now. Let's see what we can come okay. up with. <laughs> and it's so hard. I always draw a blank. Um, Oh, time is up. Okay. Time is time is up. <laughs> okay, only four for me. Only four words for me. So okay. yes, you have to. Uh, you can get involved, Amir. Of course. Uh, so words in this category is starting with the letter L. So let's see the first one. Occupation. Uh, what did you get? Andrew? Well, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit too basic, but I said lawyer. Oh yeah, me too. I'm basic. Too. Oh my god, lawyer. I don't know, um, sometimes they post, the followers post something different here. I couldn't think of anything else. What about fruit? Okay, it's maybe difficult. I cheated, maybe I cheated on, on the fruit and maybe maybe you're not going to agree with this, but 
You know, there are, there are things called cranberries, but there are two varieties. I think there's high bush and low bush. And I, I couldn't think of oh, any, wow. any fruit. So I chose uh, low bush cranberries. I don't know if it's valid. Low bush cranberries. Have you, have you seen this? Cram no, it's okay. It's, uh, it's a fruit. It's okay. But yeah. I, I will try to, I'm trying to visualize it. And have you, is, uh, is it common? Like where you used Not in yeah, Alaska, right? I grew up, they have a lot of different types of berries. And so they, they, ah, people get very okay. specific about uh -huh. all, of these, all of these different types of berries. Nice. Well, I got lemon. <laughs> I got lemon. Ooh. That's like, and that's actually, like I, I should have thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens in this game. And the other word that I can, can think of now is lime. Because in Brazil, we actually have lime. We don't have the yellow lemon. We have the green yeah. lime. I think that's true in many there. places in South America. Yeah. What um, about animal? Um, I went with llama. Oh, okay. Good. Good one. Because I got lion. Lion. Oh, okay. Llama. Good. Yeah. Okay. In a nationality with L. Um, starting I, with I, went with, I went with uh, Lebanese. There's a lot of these, but I went with Lebanese. Lebanese. I put one here. I'm not sure if you can help me. I put Liberian from Liberia. Is it a nationality? Yeah, it is, yeah, right? Liberian. Yeah, Liberian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Liberian. I, I also put it on clothing. Yeah, what did you get? Um, on clothing, <laughs> I, I couldn't think of anything. I was drawing a blank, so I put linen pants. <laughs> a linen <laughs> pants, yeah. Which is technically I mean, not the material. I think I don't think you should give it to me. I, I think that's cheap. No, that's okay because last time I got uh, it should start with F, and I got a felt hat. Oh. Why? I don't know because you know these words that I never use. I've never you know <laughs> can think of a felt hat. I don't remember the last time I saw it. But anyway, uh, all right. So let's try another letter. And, and what was your L word for clothing? I didn't get anything. Oh, you didn't Nothing. get anything. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah, yes. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't think of anything for that, you know. Um, that, that is hard. And it's funny because L shouldn't be so hard. Yeah, it's a common All letter. Right. It is. <laughs> okay, let's try another uh, letter. English Sherlock, give us a letter. Ever, hello, give us a letter, please. One single letter. And the next for all letter of us. Is... C. C. Thank you, okay, Ashraf. So C it is. Let, let okay. me get the timer started. Okay, we're ready to go. Followers, any ideas? <laughs> People are saying, oh, here. All right. I think this is easier. Letter C is not so, so difficult. Yeah, what, I have an easier process. Yeah? What about uh, an occupation starting with C? I'm, I wonder if any of the listeners here are watchers or are participants. <laughs> uh, English Sherlock, we're playing a game. Um, so English Sherlock, uh, can you think of an occupation or a job that starts with C? Um, yeah. I think mine is, mine is not brilliant, but mine is probably adequate. Uh, cook. Okay. Good Paula, job, Paula. Paula jumped in. Paula jumped in. Very good job. Chef. Oh, chef. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she's on a, uh, she's yeah. on a roll. <laughs> Look at her. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Okay, good. And, and what about you, Erika? Well, I got, I got chef too. At, at first, I got cab driver. 
<laughs> but again, I have I, I have an adjective here. I don't know, a cab driver. Also, I think your answer is more interesting than mine. I, I said um, coach, cashier. A coach, okay. a, coach yeah. a cashier, a uh, Paola is, is is kicking our behinds here. Yeah, uh, what is that again, get, Andrew? We should, get, we should get her on a live. Uh, yeah, cashier. And, All right. And, um, what about, does anybody out there, does anybody out there have any C fruit words? C fruit, fruit. words. So this one is, this Sorry. one I think is going to be a little bit easier. Once again, I think C generally yeah. is easier. What did you get, Erika? I got cherry. Oh, cherry. that's very nice. I, th I thought of cr cranberry, but we had already yeah. mentioned it. Did you get that? <laughs> that one? Uh, well, I, I did write it down, but my first choice was coconut. And, coconut, um, yeah. I mean, I, I assume that's a fruit. It's an awfully, oh, I mean, it's a, what is it? Is it, is it a nut? I don't know. Coconut. I'm, yeah, I it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe I'm disqualified. Maybe I'm cheating again. <laughs> you shouldn't play with that's, me. <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry about that. I'm not, I'm not even, <laughs> I don't uh, keep score. Of the, the points, the, the points don't matter here. So let's just okay. keep. Keep going. Animals. Must say the environment says citrus, and I agree that that's a good citrus. one. Citrus. Citrus is a whole category, in fact. Yeah. And uh, now it's that. animals that begin with C. Animals, animals, animals. Um, you know, I have to say that I, I thought of a couple, but I didn't really think of as many as I thought I would have. Uh-huh. Yeah. What did you get for this one? I got crocodile. Oh, crocodile? That's a good one. That's a good, I got um, crow and cow. And mm, I nice. also I like wondered if, if cat is a great one. Yeah. Thank you, Sherlock. Yeah. Um, and also I, got, I wrote canine, even though that's a category and not an actual animal. Um, I didn't oh, know if, okay. if, that, if that fit in the, the rules or not. I guess we could also say camels or. Yeah, um, there you uh, go. Hello, John and, Jack. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's very nice. Really well, thank you for asking. What's going on? We are playing a game and uh, thinking of words starting with the letter C right now. So now it's a nationality, nationality yeah, yeah, starting yeah. with a C. Yeah, and so this one, um, there should be quite a few. Um, I mean, I, I can think of quite a few off the top of my head here, a lot actually. Um, yeah. What did you get for the nationality with C? I got Canadian, and uh, the last time we played, yeah, someone said Chilean, 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 Chile. Chilean, Chilean. Chilean. Or, yes. Or Chinese. What I wrote was Croatian. I mean, I guess Croatian. that's just closer, closer to me somehow. So I wrote uh -huh. Croatian. Yeah, Croatian. Uh, but you're By right. The way, Colombian or Colombian. You know, yeah. Have you visited other countries in Europe? Well, um, yeah, I have. I, I've spent a fair amount of time in Belgium and in Germany because I have friends there. Um, uh -huh. And I've worked a couple of summers in Italy. Um, but, you know, the crazy thing is I've never been to Portugal. Every oh, year really? I say, I'm going to Portugal. And every year <laughs> something happens. And I, I end up not being in Portugal. Uh -huh. um, so one of the nice things about doing our job and living in Europe is that um, travel is so easy. And mm -hmm. if you work from your computer like I do, and, and I think you might, yeah. um, then, then it makes life really easy. For example, next, um, next week I'm going to be in Berlin all week at a conference. Um, and I, I don't have to interrupt my work. I, I don't, uh -huh. you know. Nothing, I don't, it's not really like exactly like going on vacation, but it's kind of like going on vacation. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, yes. makes, that makes it really nice in that sense. Yeah. There are advantages. Hello, Buzra from Turkey. How are you doing? Hello, aspirant. So we're playing this game in which we have now to come up with words, uh, clothing, um, words starting with the letter C. And what did you get, Andrew, for clothes? Okay. I'm American. I got cowboy boots. Come on. Cowboy, cowboy <laughs> boots, of course. <laughs> cool. I got a cap. Cap? A cap. Good. 
Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Definitely uh, caps. Uh, yes. Cowboy hats. Um, um, now, see, would something like a cuff link, would that be a legitimate, valid answer? Yeah, yeah, it would. Cuff link. Okay. Cuff, do I, you I have cuff link? More of an accessory <laughs> or an item of clothing or if accessory is under the general rubric of clothing. I would. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, this is a very broad. I'm using the word clothing here in a br very broad way. <laughs> okay. So it's, um, it's okay. okay. All right. Okay, so this is letter C. Letter C is, is uh, it was letter C, and before that I forgot what letter we had before that. So now we need another letter. So you followers, please, conversation, yes. Uh -huh. John Jack, John Jack, can you, uh, can you give us a letter? Give us a letter of the alphabet that is not uh, L or C, and hopefully not Z. Don't do Z. Z and Q. And, uh, Q. That's challenging. E. I like it. I like it. So set, the, you, set the timer and we'll all do E. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Starting right now. Okay. Okay. There is one missing. Um, Couldn't think okay. of any fruit starting with E. <laughs> yeah, it's funny okay, because you, I... are, you are also from the land of many fruits. They've got a big diversity of, yeah. of fruit in many South American countries. Yeah, so I, I, thought, I don't know I thought why. maybe you would have extra, extra <laughs> sort of power on that one. Maybe, yeah, maybe I will remember them now. But anyway, occupation, what did you get? Um, I, said, um, I said entertainer. Entertainer, nice. He said electrician, electrician. Oh, perfect, all right. Okay, Paula, any? Uh, go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, any uh, occupations? This is for the followers, the, the listeners, the watchers. Any words starting with the letter E? Any occupations? Entrepreneur. Uh, okay. Ah, Paula got another uh, great entrepreneur. That's nice, a word that, um, that a lot of people have difficulty saying, entrepreneur. And a lot of my How students are like, whoa, yeah. that word is crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know why. Um, How do you teach the, the pronunciation of this word usually? What do you think? I just, I just uh, break it down into really small parts for them. And the other thing is that sometimes I can write it according to their phonetic reasoning. Like, for example, mm -hmm. the word uh, judge is incredibly mm -hmm. difficult for the Spanish. But if you write... L L A L L. They, uh -huh. they say, oh, judge. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's smart. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So okay. I've tried. I've tried to teach it using my letters, and it, you can uh -huh. spend an hour trying to teach it, and you mm -hmm. won't make progress. But if you write mm -hmm. L L A L L on the board or L L A C H, they'll just say judge. Okay. Awesome. 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 Okay, so and, Busra said elderberry. <laughs> okay, that's really smart. That is absolutely really smart because I couldn't think of anything. So Busra, thank you. Yeah, oh, so you couldn't either, yeah? No, I, I couldn't. I still I, can't. <laughs> I still can't. Yeah, neither can I. I'm, I, was, I was imagining being in the supermarket and I was looking around and seeing what would uh -huh. I see in the supermarket and I, I just didn't come um, up with anything. Yeah, um, me neither. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's see an animal. What about an animal? Starting an animal, I went with eagle. Eagle, yeah. I, I got eel. Oh, eel. Nice. 
But there yes. is also elephant. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, elephant or um, yeah, eagle. Uh, so Paula and I agree on eagle. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Cool. And, okay. Uh, and and what about Ewok? I mean, would would that be considered? I mean, can we use animals from Star Wars? <laughs> you said. <Big> you said... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's even broader, but. <laughs> For I'm me, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> oh, and let's see if people here, I don't know if they watch Star Wars, but can you can the followers here spell Ewok? Do you know how to write this word? I, Paula, I, I think I might know, but I won't say anything. Let's see, John, John Jack, do you know how to spell this word? Ewok? Who here is a fan of Star Wars? Star Wars fan? Almost that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh there, are, there is one extra word, if I'm correct. Any other guess? No? No way? Oh. Because this is a good exercise, right? To try to write a word that you might have, Ooh, you might not know, know yeah, how, to, how to write, just from the sounds. So you walk. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Bruna, do you know? Almost, almost that, Ahmed. <laughs> Bruno, do you know how to spell the word Ewok from Ewok. Star Wars? Ewok. I don't think people know. So how is it spelled, uh, Andrew? Can you put it here? I believe it's E-W-O-K, Ewok. So it's yeah. very phonetic. Yeah. Ewok. I'll just write it here like that. Right? Yeah. I think there it was an E as an elephant. Yeah, like, like uh, who was that? Uh, yeah, you just wrote it. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because the um, other one is evoke, evoke. Yeah. And what did you get for the country? Country, nationality? I got Egyptian. Egyptian? Oh, okay, good. Egyptian, yeah. Egyptian. I went with um, Equatorian. Ah, okay, cool. You know, nice. you know, this is interesting because I, I originally went with El Salvadorian, but I heard just two weeks ago that the people from El Salvador in the English language uh -huh. are not El Salvadorian. I heard that that is oh. an incorrect idea. They're actually Salvadorian with no E-L. Ah, okay. Salvadorian. So it's, it's many, oh, many people, like I think the majority of people think it's, oh, El Salvadorians, but they're only uh -huh. Salvadorian, apparently. That's what I heard recently from a uh -huh. reliable source. Ah, okay, good. Interesting. All right, I think we have time for one last letter. What, what about your clothing for? Oh for... yeah, yeah. I got yeah, yeah. I got earrings. So earrings. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else starting with E? <laughs> I um, think it's... earmuffs. <laughs> kind of like yes. your work. earmuffs. Yeah, like almost uh, similar to the earmuffs. Yeah, and I I don't really know what else. I mean. Um, belts, socks, shoes, shorts, um, you know, I can't think of anything off, but I know, I know Paula knows. Paula definitely knows something. Uh, yeah. Paula, um, so where are you? She'll, she'll, she'll probably <laughs> chime in in a, in a, in a second here with uh, <laughs> yeah. her brilliance. Um, but anything starting with here. Yeah. Oh, is it J? J, J, J okay, it is. Here we go. Okay. Okay, one minute. Uh, yeah, this is very hard. Oh, oh my God, and we have only 10 seconds left. How could I yes. <laughs> have done that? This is going to end in seven seconds. Oh, my God. Bye. I'll start again just to